Something I forgot to mention in the actual video itself this is the first traditional art video I'm filming in the new house so I'm sorry that the lighting is inconsistent and or bad at times I'm trying my best. Anyways here's the video. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. I get asked about art style constantly. It could be like how to find your art style, how to improve your art style, how do you learn to like your art style and stuff like that, how to be comfortable in your art style, just the whole art style umbrella. That entire topic I get asked about a lot and there is so much to talk about with this topic, I guess. I'm trying to fit as much of it in this video as I can, but I have no doubt in my mind that I'm probably going to miss something. <laughs> I would say that this video is less about learning to find an art style and more about how to develop your current art style. But honestly, regardless of where you are in your art style journey, <laughs> we can call it. There's probably something in this video that you can hopefully take into consideration. <laughs> and believe it or not, going through a bit of an art style crisis or not liking your art style or feeling like it's not good enough, that's something that most, if not all, artists really go through. That includes me! Hello! I've had that before, <laughs> and I'm probably going to continue to have that. I think that for most artists, you don't find an art style and then feel super comfortable in it all the time. There are going to be like highs and lows, there are going to be times where you're really proud of your art style and you really like it and you really feel comfortable in it, but then you might also feel a little bit later down the road that you don't like it as much and you see other art styles that are better than yours, in your opinion, and then you might swing back around and go like, oh my art style is amazing, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> there are a lot of people who who watch my channel and really really like my art style but there are things about my art style that I'm still not super satisfied with and things that I still want to improve with and this might be a weird place to start off the video of me just saying like everybody hates their art style a little bit sometimes but that's something that I really want to, <laughs> to just nail home I guess before I even get into this because first of all you're not alone but second of all you're not the only person seeing your art style a lot of the time you know whether you post online or you just share it among like family and friends in your personal life. Odds are there are somebody out there who likes your art style a lot more than you do. And I mentioned recently that like I wasn't super satisfied with how I draw noses in my art style, but then I got a comment saying like, I love the way you draw noses and it made me feel a lot better about it. And then someone left a comment on that video being like, I literally stole the way you draw noses. So <laughs> I guess the overall arching thing I want to put in your mind before we even really get into it is that art style is very, very, very subjective objective thing. There isn't really a wrong way to have an art style, I guess. And so if you feel like you don't like your art style or that it's bad or whatever, it's not. If anything, it might be a little bit underdeveloped, but there isn't a wrong way to have an art style. So your art style isn't bad, your art style isn't wrong, it just might not be where you want it to be. And that's why I'm here. <laughs> I kind of broke down this video into three sections. The last section is the longest section, so the first two might seem like they're going by a little quickly, but just bear with me. If you don't like your art style, you kind of have to break it down to figure out what it is that you don't like. And in my maybe not so professional opinion, that starts with where does your art style really come from? Many, many, many people have influences in their art style. And so if you aren't super satisfied with it, the first advice I would give is think about what influenced your art style. And if you don't have any influences, find some. <laughs> I think this is the first step that a lot of people really get stuck on because they feel the need to have an art style that is super completely unique and original. Some people might see an art style that they really, really love and it ends up influencing their art style. But then as they continue to draw on their art style, it feels less like their art style and somebody else's art style. I guess art style is going to lose meaning really, really quickly with how often I'm saying it in this video, but <laughs> I just want you to take that concept of being original and being super creative and unique and innovative. Just throw that out the window. You don't need that. <laughs> I think art style should be a lot less about being super crazy and unique and something no one has ever seen before and something that you really like. And honestly, I feel like doing that will attract more people to your art style anyway. At least that's how it worked for me. The moment I started drawing more things that I liked instead of focusing on trying to have a unique art style, that is when I noticed like my channel and social media really starting to grow. And a quick point on finding influences in your art style. If you're looking for influences or trying to figure out what it is you want to do with your art and where you want to go, there is a big difference between liking somebody's art 
and having somebody's art be influential to you. There are plenty of artists that I follow because I like their art. It's really nice to look at. I think it's super cool, but their art isn't always something that I want in my art. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're allowed to have artists that you like, but don't want to be like, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I'm not talking about finding artists that you just like. I am talking about artists where you see something about their art and you go, I would love to have that be a part of my art. I think this is something else that a lot of people also get stuck on when it comes to disliking their art style and their art. There is a big difference between your art style and an artist's skill and the growth that they make. And so sometimes when people say that they don't like their art style, it might not even be their art style. It could just be that it's not where they want it to be because their skill level isn't where they want it to be. I'm not saying don't experiment with your art style and don't change it and that that's absolutely the issue. But I think a lot of people take lack of skill and lack of growth for disliking their art style, but they're not the same. So I feel like the better that you will get at art, the more and more you'll end up liking your art style. At least for some people. Just a little thought for you guys to have, for you to sit on. Break down your influences, right? Look at your influences, look at their art, look at your art. So when you are looking your art, when you are looking your art, when you are looking at your art, I don't know if this will make any sense, but like open to different like thought processes because they're both important. Think about your art style in terms of your influences and then think of your art style without your influences. Both of them can give you very different opinions and it might th make things a little bit more confusing. They might also help you figure out out what the hizzity heck is going on. I won't say that again, I'm sorry. So when you look at your art, how does it make you feel? In terms of looking at it from an influences point of view, influencers, influ the people who made you go, ah yes, art style here. Does it make you feel happy? Does it make you feel like you're just copying your influences? Does it feel like you're taking an interpretation of something they made and making it more into your own? And then thinking of it outside of who influenced you. Are you happy looking at it? Is it something that you want to make? Is it something that you're proud of? Is it something you want to continue doing? Do doing, doing, doing. If I'm making a video like this, I should probably learn to speak in be articulate. <laughs> I don't really want to get into the whole debate of whether or not you can copy an art style because that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> Just how do you feel about your art style personally? And how does it make you feel both in terms of who influenced you and is it just, do you, do you like making what you make? I am going to remind you that if you are unhappy with your art style, it might not necessarily be your art style. Sure, that could definitely be the problem and maybe it's something to keep in mind, but it could also be that your skill hasn't progressed the way that you wanted it to. And so as we are going to dig a little deeper and try and figure out what it is that you don't like about your art style, just know that sometimes things that you want to improve with your art isn't a stylistic choice. It's more of just building skill over time as you continue to draw. And some of the stuff that we are going to be talking about in this video is very much that. It is something that can only really be improved as you keep drawing over time. But if you aren't happy with your art style, it's, it's, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna figure out why. That means you have to break down your art style. And this has nothing to do with the video really, but I just wanted, I wanted to let you guys know. <laughs> I don't script my videos, but I make notes for things that I want to say. And these notes say, if unhappy with style, break down. And I meant it as <laughs> like, break down your art style. The way that <laughs> I wrote it just made it seem like, oh, you don't like your art? Have a mental breakdown. But don't, don't do that. I'm, th the whole point of this video is to prevent that. <laughs> the reason I'm going to ask you guys to break down your art style is because there's a lot of things about art style that people don't really consider. I think that there are some general ideas of what art style is, but there's a lot more to it that you guys might not even really think about. Here's the big meat and bones of the video. Meat and bones. The big meat of the video. Should stop trying to use, what's it, analogies? If I don't really know what they are. But anyways, art style, right? <laughs> there are a lot of things to consider when it comes to art style, and I'm going to start with the two that I think people think of most when it comes to art style. The first one is anatomy and proportions. Right off the bat, immediately, I think there is a bit of a misunderstanding with this. There is a difference between anatomy and proportions. Anatomy is the body parts, so like drawing an arm, drawing a leg, drawing the torso. And then proportions is how those individual pieces of anatomy relate to each other. So like how big the eyes are on the face, or how big the hand is compared to the rest of the body. 
you know what I mean. People tend to get those confused, so one person might say that they're bad at anatomy, when really they're bad at proportions, and vice versa. But I also think that this is one of the first things, if not the first thing, that comes to people's mind when it comes to art styles. And I think the three most common ones is a more Western style of anatomy and proportions, a more like Eastern style or like a more anime style, and then a realistic style. Some people have a combination of all three, of two, maybe just one. It really depends. <laughs> when it comes to my own personal art style, I would say it's a combination between realistic and anime. It's like a little bit too realistic to be anime, but too anime to be realistic, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but then even amongst these categories, aside from maybe realistic, there are still categories within those categories. Like not all anime looks the same and not all Western cartoons look the same. I feel like with Western cartoons, especially some Western cartoons do have more realistic body proportions and some are very, very, very cartoony to the point where the characters kind of just look like shapes. And for something that people really seem to be focusing on, at least from what I've seen on the internet, I don't think in a lot of cases it's a super memorable part of art style. If you have like a super super exaggerated anatomy in your art style, like I said how some people's anatomy in proportions kind of just look like shapes, if it's not something like that, a lot of the times it's not the most memorable or identifiable part of an art style. Like for me, I honestly don't think that like my, like the way that I draw anatomy and proportions or anything super special. I think there are a lot of artists on the internet these days that have anatomy in proportion like I do. I think it's something that people really, really seem to focus on for something that I don't think gives as much payoff as people think it does. Obviously study your anatomy and your proportions and practice all of that, but I don't think it is one of the defining parts of an art style like a lot of people seem to think it is. The next part is stylization. I don't know the proper way to categorize it or how to say it, so we're just gonna call it stylization. And this is also one of the first, if not the first things that people think of when it comes to art style. And I would say that this is definitely more of an identifiable thing than anatomy and proportions. And what I mean by stylization is things like how an artist goes about drawing eyes, how they draw hair, how they draw the folds and clothes, how they draw clothes themselves and stuff like that. There are so many different ways to draw eyes that look different. There are so many different ways to draw the folds and clothes that look different. I think for stylization there are the same three categories of having a western, an eastern more anime style, or a realistic style, but there are also things like simplistic stylization, complex stylization. For me personally, I would say mine leans a little bit more on complex. I just really like adding in those finer details but the way that somebody draws clothes, for example, might be a lot more simple. Did you just hear that voice crack right there? love testosterone. <laughs> but this is something that people really, really get stuck on, and I think it is because of that concept of originality that I told you all to throw out earlier, so if that's still in your head, toss that. <laughs> I think the things I'm going to be talking about next kind of lead up to stylization, so maybe I should have saved this one more for last, but... I know it's something that people think about a lot, so I figured I'd mention it first. <laughs> I would say that it's an important part of art style, but that is something that comes over time after doing a lot of experiments, looking at a bunch of different reference images. There isn't a wrong way to do this, really, but there are many ways. So if this is something that you're struggling with, look up different artists on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, anywhere, <laughs> really. But figuring out how to draw specific aspects of your art might be a little bit easier as we get into these next points right here. Going back to the basics, shapes is a very important part of art style. And that's not something I think people consider all of the time when thinking about art style. I think that generally speaking, all artists should use all shapes. It's important to know how to use a variety of shapes, the sort of impression that each shape's give off. But that said, there's nothing wrong with gravitating towards certain shapes more often than others. Different shapes give off different moods. I talk about shape language a lot whenever I talk about character design, but it's not just a character design thing, it's an everything thing. <laughs> Even with like regular everyday objects, the shapes that you use to draw them can really change the mood and it can just, it can really affect the vibe of the art style. Like if we think about the three more basic shapes, circles, triangles, and squares, if we look at my art style, I would say triangles I use very rarely, and I definitely gravitate more towards circles, but I use squares just as often. 
maybe circles a little more, so maybe not just as often. <laughs> but as a result, a lot of my art and a lot of my characters tend to look a lot softer because most of what I use are those rounder shapes. And I think I'm fairly decent at drawing more like tough, burly looking characters because I also use squares. But I don't think I'm as good at drawing maybe like sly, cunning type of characters because those characters tend to use a lot of triangles because that's the vibe that triangles tend to give off. If someone were to use a lot more triangles in their art style, the entire vibe of their art style might feel not necessarily harsh, but maybe a little bit more harsh. <laughs> I don't really know the way to word it, but hopefully you know what I mean. I think that shapes are just as important to art style as anything, but it's not something that I see many people considering when they talk about their art style. So if you're not happy with art style, maybe play around with different shapes. What shapes do you see in people, animals, objects, whatever it is that you draw? Just, 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 just go fucking wild with it. I think another part of art style that is very important is colors. And just like shapes, I think it is important that all artists use all colors. It's important to know how to use a variety of color palettes, a variety of color combos. But again, there's nothing wrong with gravitating towards some. I know I've talked on my channel before about how I tend to use a lot of blues. I think I use a lot of reds and browns. Something like that is definitely part of somebody's art style. But also more than that, the tones of the colors are very very telling of an art style. Personally, I like to use a lot of really bright, saturated colors. Somebody might use more desaturated colors. Some artists might use monochromatic color schemes. Some might use more simple color schemes. Some might use very complex color schemes. But I think that what colors and artists use most often is another identifiable part of their art style. And again, can really change the vibe. <laughs> I think a lot of my art seems somewhere between like soft and like cheery because I do use a lot of those bright colors, but somebody who uses more darker, desaturated colors, their art style might seem a bit more gloomy or spooky or anything along those lines. And again, one isn't better than the other. There isn't a wrong way to have an art style. It's just personally what you want to do. Kind of on a similar note, there is shading. What light sources do an artist use often? What colors do they use to shade? Is the way that they shade simple or is it complex? How do they add highlights to their drawing? Is that simple or is that complex? And what colors do they use for those? Do they use super harsh shading or do they do a lot of blending? And again, stuff like this really changes the mood and really changes the vibe of your art style. This is something that I get comments on. I don't want to say most often, but it's one of the things that I get most often about my art style is the way that I shade things. Again, I get that everything looks all soft, but I also get that things look very shiny and smooth. That's because of the colors that I tend to use and the way that I blend things. I tend to do a lot of blending and I tend to add maybe a bit more highlights than somebody might add <laughs> to their art. I think that this is something that people are starting to think a little bit more about in terms of art style, but I don't think it's something people still consider enough. So keep shading in mind. Line work, I think, is something that people generally don't think a whole lot about when it comes to art style, but I think that maybe on my channel a little bit more <laughs> because I love line art. It's something that I've always loved doing, but the way that you do line art also affects the way that your art style looks. I think it's something that people don't really think about because a lot of people don't really like doing it. <laughs> Some people think that their sketches turn out a lot better than their line art and so they tend to be afraid to do line art, but it is a very important part of art style. Line quality is very important. For me personally, I like a lot of crisp lines and I'm also gravitating towards thinner and thinner lines as time goes on, but some art styles use thicker lines. Some use a combination of thick and thin. I use a lot of hatching in my art style. Some might not have any hatching. I also use, I guess ink fills would be the best way to call it, where you just fill something in with the line art color. Some art styles might not have that at all. Some might have more than I do. I don't really have a texture to my line art. Some people might use a super textured brush to make their line art. I very, very rarely use black line art. Somebody might use only exclusively black line art. I don't think people really realize how much there is to line art. Again, I think it's just people, generally speaking, don't really like line art, but it's it's a very important part of art style. So if you don't like line art, maybe just completely omitting line art from your art style. That's another option. <laughs> Some people don't use line art at all. Some people have really clean lines. Some people have a bit more sketchy lines for their line art. I know it might not be your favorite thing to do, but it's a very important thing to do. So I'm asking you to consider it. <laughs> and this last part isn't about art style itself, but also it kind of is. I'll get 
into it, <laughs> I want to talk about the medium that an artist might use. Depending on who you are, it's important to do a variety of different mediums in your art. I would say for someone like me, where art is my job, it's more important for me to have a variety of skills. It's, I think it's more important for me to like know how to use markers and colored pencils and paints. Of course, it's not like absolutely needed. I think that every artist has their specialty and their go-to, but I did want to mention this because the type of medium that you use can really change how you approach making art, which also changes your art style. Honestly, I think it takes real, real like skill, <laughs> like a lot of lot of skill to have somebody use a bunch of different mediums and have their art style be 100% consistent through all of those art styles. I think I personally am getting better at using different mediums and having somebody tell that I made it, but it's still not completely consistent from medium to medium. Like I would say my signature medium would either be digital art or Copic markers. And then in this video, I'm using gouache. And if we look at like my digital art or my Copic illustrations, for example, those tend to be a lot more cleaned up. And then with my gouache illustrations, they tend to be a lot more rough. The colors I use tend to be a lot more different. My line art is less intricate. And that's just because of the nature of the medium. I'm not as good as using gouache. So things tend to be a little bit more rough. I don't have as many colors. So the colors I use are different. But even like personal issues aside, the way that you go about using gouache is very different from how you would go about using Copic markers because gouache can be transparent or opaque. Copics are transparent. And we look at like acrylic paint, for example, that is exclusively opaque. But then even if we look at digital art, and Copic illustrations, even the way I go about using those can be pretty different. I would say generally speaking, out of every medium that I use, my digital art and my marker illustrations look the most alike, but even then there are some differences. Obviously with digital art, you have all of the colors in the world at your disposal, but then with Copic illustrations, I think when I do traditional art, the colors I use tend to be more repetitive because I don't have that unlimited amount of colors. With my traditional art, I tend to use one consistent color of line art, or if anything, I'll use two different colors. But then with my digital art, I change the color of the line art for everything to match whatever is underneath. Again, this isn't something that is art style exclusive, but it is something that I want you guys to keep in mind. Because if you are unhappy with your art style, maybe try using a different medium. If you use multiple mediums already, maybe you're unhappy with your art style in one, but like it a lot better with another medium. And if that's the case, repeat everything I said in this video, break it down, figure out which one you like better, figure out what it is you don't like about it. Because once you figure out what it is you don't like about it, then you can improve on it. I think people just generally say like, I don't like my art style, but then don't really think about what it is you don't like about it. So I'm hoping in this video, I gave you some ideas of things to think about. Think about them in terms of your own art style if you're unhappy with it. Think about what it is you don't like about it and then go from there. Again, there is a lot to say about art style, but I would like to think I at least covered most of it, but feel free to let me know if there's anything else you can think of. These are all the things that I could think of when I was making my notes for this video. And now that I'm thinking about it, since I said my signature medium would either be Copics or digital art. I probably should have done that in this video, but it's fine. <laughs> we don't got to talk about that. I just wanted to do some gouache, but I hope I gave you anything helpful in this video. Let me know if it was helpful to you. Let me know if there's anything else that you would like to add to this conversation. And before I go, I do want to leave you with just one little piece one, one, one little piece of advice. <laughs> I can sit here all day and tell you different ways to go about changing your art style. I can help you break down art style. I can give you advice on how to improve your art style. But not only is it up to you to do those things, <laughs> but also I can't change your self-esteem. <laughs> Sometimes if you have a little bit of a lower self-esteem, you might just hate everything that you do. But I do want to remind you that there is somebody out there who loves your art. Again, I'm gonna bring up the noses thing. <laughs> I never really liked the way that I draw noses, but a lot of you guys love it. A lot of you guys incorporate it into your art. And slowly but surely, I am starting to like the way that I draw noses. I said earlier that it might not be an art style thing and it might not be a skill thing, but it also might be a self-esteem thing. So just keep that in mind. And if you do have a low self-esteem, stop it. I'll fight you. You're great. You're amazing. We, we, do, we do not stand self-hatred. I might joke about hating myself a lot, but don't, don't, don't. 
Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> Anyways, hi, I'm Oliver. <laughs> if you're new here, if you are new here, I'm sorry for that aggression. <laughs> but if you are new here, consider subscribing. I post new videos ideally every Wednesday, but I'm slowly turning into Jenna Marbles with it becoming every Wednesday slash Thursday. I'm trying my best here, <laughs> but I make a lot of art on this channel. As you could probably guess, I draw a lot of my own original characters. Sometimes I'll make fan art, I'll do sketch vlogs, I'll do whatever I want, because that's just how I roll. If any of that sounds interesting to you, feel free to subscribe. We'd love to have you here. And if you want to see more from me, you can follow me on social media. Those will be shown on screen now and linked in the description box below. I also have my Kofi page down there if you would like to give your boy a little tip, I'd appreciate that. And if you want to see more videos from me, there will be some on screen now and linked in the iCard for you to check out. Again, I'd really appreciate it. I apologize for how much my voice cracked and braked, trying to edit them out. I'm going through second puberty and it's a lot. But thank you for watching <laughs> and I will hopefully see you next week. Bye.